now we'll sing uh, 511. Actually, not 511. <laughs> 512, I believe, actually. Yeah, 512. <laughs> that are working in Ukraine, and uh, it's a real blessing. just want to share with you just uh, a lot of good things uh, going on uh, with this situation. God uh, can uh, uh, make beauty out of ashes, amen, and uh, bad situation, obviously, but this, this particular two pastors are, are ministering there and uh, seeing a lot of people hungry for the gospel, and uh, we never know how God is using these things to bring people to Christ. 
their temporary, of course, our temporary suffering doesn't compare to our eternal bliss that is promised in the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, what, a, what a blessing that is, folks. I, I, I'm, I'm unsure how we really realize having eternal life and having a relationship with God and just being able to live forever. I mean, that's just uh, amazing. And this song tonight, uh, David and those in the Old Testament did not have, you know, what we have. You know, they really didn't. They didn't have the whole canon of the Bible. They didn't know everything about uh, eternity and those kind of things. You know, they, they viewed, uh, and they were earth people because God had blessed them on the earth. And we'll talk about that in the message. And uh, But you and I got the full canon, amen. I believe, Bridget, you're still in Revelation, teaching in Revelation. And, um, uh, of course, that's the, the culmination of everything, right? It's the end of the end of, of the particular things that God is doing. And um, and then it goes on into eternity, right? Amen. And uh, what, a, what a blessing that's going to be. And uh, how how is all that going to be? Amen. And, uh, boy, we need to see the beauty in God. The beauty in God. God made everything. And he is a beautiful God. And, and the, his creation uh, shows that. Especially in the human being. Amen. And so anyway. Hallelujah. What a Savior. Right? Praise God. What a God we serve. And what a God we have. Don't forget again the baby bottle back there. If you will uh, put some uh, funds in there. That would be great. Of course you can pray about it. See what God would have you to do. Uh, homecoming um, in your bulletin is not correct. I meant to tell you that this morning. That should be June the 5th is that Sunday, not June the 6th. And so we'll, we won't be having homecoming on Monday, okay? <laughs> It'll be Sunday, June the 5th. All right, Pastor Fletcher already talked with him, planning on being here. It's Lord willing if he can can make it. And so excited about that. Good. And, uh, and so uh, looking forward to that uh, time. And uh, I believe that's going to be our, our 20th year, right? Amen. What a blessing. 20 years. That's amazing, isn't it? And uh, Susanna was talking about, boy, this week went by fast. She said, all the weeks are going by fast. And I said, yep. She said, how long do they keep going by fast? I said, they're going to keep going fast according to the Bible, right? Uh, the Bible says in the book of Daniel, you know, this thing of time and the speed and all these things. It's going to just, ooh, and uh, we're in a time warp and uh, going, going, going. But one day we're going to slow down and enjoy the things of God and not have to worry about. Uh, we shouldn't worry anyway. We know that's a sin. But uh, anyway, help us, help us, help us, right? Again, glad you're here tonight. Looking forward to uh, God speaking to our hearts. Uh, I am so looking forward to the, the paving out here and what it's going to look like. They, they just paved Chatham Middle up here, and it really looks really, really nice. And not, not the paving company we have coming but uh, anyway you drive by there and you see that nice pavement uh, it just uh, makes the school look better and uh, I think the pavement out here is going to make the church look better and uh, but you know we need to look better don't we it's not the building not all those things out there that's a blessing uh, but God wants to make us better right amen and uh, so again glad that you're here oh you know what <laughs> we got to turn that thing on didn't we no I got it oh well, they, hopefully you couldn't see me say that. <laughs> Let's stand one more time. We'll sing number 502. Uh, in my heart, there rings a melody.
is uh, froze, uh, frozen out there, and so uh, probably needs some Freon in it, so we had to get Steve to come out and uh, service us and check us out. And uh, y'all probably feel good, though, don't you? Over there. A little warm over on that side? Okay, well, you, you got more people in there. You're welcome to come to this side. It's cooler over here. Uh, you know, I told you about that church uh, where they had uh, the people would get up in the middle of the service and they would switch sides because the heater uh, that they had would heat just on one side. And uh, the new preacher came, and, uh, and while he was preaching, this was going on. He had no clue, uh, you know, why it was going on. It was later on that this had happened years ago, and they never changed. And they just kept doing it even when they had a new heating system in there and all that. And uh, they just did it automatically. And uh, finally, one of the old uh, senior saint ladies told him what the deal was and why they did it. And uh, so they just never... Never changed that, you know. They just got up in the middle of the service and switched sides to, to let other people be comfortable and all that. So uh, finally the preacher, uh, again, they ended up not doing it anymore. But uh, uh, we're, we're creatures of habit, aren't we? And uh, help us, help us, help us. All right, Jack Bullets in there. I want to uh, uh, give you a few prayer requests. Um, uh, as I mentioned to you this morning, uh, 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 Regina Beard, continue to pray for her, continue to lift her up. God would continue to touch her. Um, uh, Valerie mentioned this morning uh, her brother's family, a lot of different things going on there, so I do pray uh, for her uh, brother's family, lift them up to a word in prayer. Um, Preacher Steve, of course, and the team coming back tomorrow from Moldova, and uh, pray that uh, they'll have safe travels and the gospel that has been shared, uh, people will respond to it. And those that have already responded to it, just pray that um, uh, that will grow in grace and knowledge of the Savior. Excuse me. Um, any other requests that you might have? Yes, sir. Is for Beverly Ashworth. Ashworth? Ashworth. Okay, Beverly Ashworth. I'm going to play music with you. I talked to him last night. They're down in Little Washington. I actually hired him in the woods and told him to watch him. They put him in the hospital. She's got kidney stones lost in both kidneys. Mm -hmm. And they're so large that they were supposed, I guess, to operate this morning. And I hadn't talked to him today, but uh, he said they were going to have to operate. But I figured it out. Okay. All right, let's certainly pray for uh, Ashley, I mean, Beverly Ashworth. Lift her up in prayer. I uh, didn't mention, but my uh, niece, uh, Kaylee, and uh, her fiance, uh, Philip are getting married this coming Saturday, and so pray for my sister Sherry as she has to uh, release uh, her as she did with Megan, and uh, so I uh, just pray that uh, God would uh, be with them, uh, if you would. Anybody else? I am going to take this jacket off, I hope you don't mind that, I kind of, it's a little on the warm side up here, even with the uh, air conditioning unit going on uh, here. No other request? All right. I certainly pray for um, uh, her Hanley for salvation. Lift him up to the Lord in prayer. Again, the Ukraine, Ukraine situation. Uh, Anthony and Angela Hart, I'm going to certainly pray for them. Do pray for Paul as he prepares uh, to get this uh, exam done, and maybe they can get some things done with his eyes uh, and his eyesight. Um, and of course, pray for Lucy also in her health. Uh, just uh, lift her up. All right, Brother Sam, pray for us, please, sir, if you would. Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful and thankful that we can come into thy presence. We do so in the precious name of thy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, recognizing that his precious shed blood gives us access unto thy throne. We're thankful for the person who said, uh, Lord, you're always there. Lord, you always care. And Lord, you always hear our prayer. Amen. And I would add, mm. Lord, you always answer our prayer. Yes. Our Father, we admit or confess to thee that um, many times we in our frailty and in our flesh um, are not happy with your answers mm. because sometimes your answer is to wait and we are right. 
people who don't like to wait, mm -hmm. sometimes your answer is no when we mm -hmm. expected a, a yes. Sure. Sometimes you say yes to something that we in our hearts really don't want to do. Mm -hmm. um, so we pray, our Father, that you might work in our hearts and our lives to make us yielded and surrendered to your will and to your answers to our prayer. Father, we were reminded this morning that the Apostle Paul was a man who was serious about the things that he said, serious about the things that he wrote, and we think of how he wrote to the Romans, and he said, I could wish that I was a curse from Christ if my fellow uh, Israelites could come to know Christ as Savior. I, I can't imagine right, right. loving somebody so much that I would be willing to give up my salvation, wow. willing to be a curse from my, my Savior mm. for somebody else. Mm. And yet, Lord, I realize that we do need to take things more serious. God help us. We need to take sin serious. Mm -hmm. We need to take your will serious. We need to take your word serious. Amen. Help us to not only learn your word, but take any step that is needful to obey it, and to obey it completely and immediately. As I was reminding Janie tonight, without turning back. We thank you for the answer to prayer on her behalf and Amen. changing Amen. her. And Father, we know that your desire to change each of us to be more like your son. Help us. For some of us, it seems like you've got your work cut out. We pray that you would help us to appreciate your faithfulness to us even when we're unfaithful and we're thankful that we could sing tonight he's my friend amen we thank thee that um, your friendship your love is unfailing and unchanging and we just again come with grateful and thankful hearts knowing that these things are true and that they won't change because our God does not change. Amen. We're thankful for the God that we have. Yes. Except of our thanks as we offer it in the beloved uh, Savior's name, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Appreciate the prayer. Anybody have a testimony about uh, the God that he was just praying to? Uh, his God. Uh, he's your God. And uh, he's, he's always always working. Amen. And uh, praise be to God for that. Anybody have a testimony they'd like to share? Uh, something God's doing in your life uh, that you'd like to share with us? All right. Amen. Uh, yes, Jim. We talk about the Lord what he's doing for Reed Kidd. He was at church again this morning. Amen. And they're talking about now planning to release him from the uh, rehabilitation, start rehabilitation at home, maybe in the next couple of weeks anyway. Sure. And he is doing, he's beginning to, to put words together. And uh, you can understand a little bit more when he, when he talks. He still doesn't have any use of his right arm, but uh, he's walking a little bit. And he was completely, completely paralyzed on the right side, but he is able to walk a little. Of course, he has to have help. Yeah, looking now in the next couple of weeks, maybe taking him from the rehabilitation center in Pittsburgh back to his home. Okay. And of course, he continued to rehabilitate him. But, uh, he was, it was a miracle. Amen. You know, when, when he came through, it was a massive stroke. And a lot of people didn't expect him to make it at all. Sure, sure. Right, that's it. Amen. 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 Speaking of that, I want to praise the Lord for my little uh, niece, Brent Lee. Just uh, this little girl, uh, it's amazing what God has done. About the same time my mom had her brain hemorrhage, uh, they took her in, my sister Sherry, and I want to praise the Lord for what God has done in Sherry's life uh, to take this little girl in, in their family. And uh, 
you know, she has been uh, an advocate for uh, uh, little Bren Lee uh, in, in stepping in to, to help her. Uh, you know, the doctors said, uh, the therapists and all these other people, of course, they, uh, she was a meth baby and um, they would neglect it, left in a crib, never taken care of, never any kind of expression of love and uh, knew nothing about uh, touch and just really recluse, uh, but yet God had other plans. God had other plans. They said she'd never walk, she'd never communicate, she'd never see, all these different things that she would never do, and she's, she's doing some of those things and doing more. And my sister Sherry, uh, going back and forth with the folks uh, on getting her this wheelchair specialized for her, and uh, they said, no, 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 she, she's not, she doesn't qualify. <laughs> she doesn't qualify. Well, uh, my sister's sort of like you, Jim. She's uh, persistent. <laughs> she kept going back and saying, well, she does qualify, and explaining them why she qualifies. You know, they didn't think she could be able to use it, but my sister sent us a video after three or four times going back. They finally gave it to her, and she does qualify, and uh, she is... Uh, using it and using it well already mm -hmm. learning how to move it around and my sister she it's just like she's walking uh, she's in front of her and she's just walking through the store and uh, she starts getting a little too far she says okay now turn it back around and she turns it back around and uh, just again a miracle of God yeah. one day again you know we, we look at this and, 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 and God knowing all this and God allowing all this and he did it folks obviously and, uh, but at the end of the day, one day, Brinley's going to walk, she's going to communicate, she's going to talk, so is my mom, and, uh, and, and many others, they're going to be able to do this, and uh, all because of our God. He deserves glory, he deserves praise, and he deserves honor. And uh, so, praise be to God for his wonderful healing power, and I say all that, one of the biggest things, and I just believe this in my heart, is uh, Sherry and her family showed little Brinley love. She found out what love is and touch and all these different things. And it just, it's amazing what God has done there. And uh, we need to recognize that ourselves, that what God's love can do for others uh, in, in our lives. And uh, that's what we're here for. Amen? Amen. All right, Psalm 115. Psalm 115, we got through. Uh, a few verses, <laughs> right, last week, and uh, we're talking again uh, about false gods. We're talking about false gods, and, um, and of course, we, we said that uh, they, uh, uh, the psalmist, we believe, was David, and uh, he said uh, in verse, uh, the first several verses there, um, he's talking about uh, not unto us, not unto us, God, we, we, we understand that uh, it's your name that is stake and at, is at stake, and we need to understand today that it's God's name that's at stake. Uh, by the way that we live and and uh, in our expression, I said to you more this morning about the prayer walk and uh, uh, and, and going out and, and, and doing these things uh, again. Not in a, uh, it's got to be God led, uh, but uh, people need to see uh, you, the Christian, and. Uh, who we really are. Don't let somebody else represent Christ when you can. Amen? That's so important, isn't it? Uh, Jesus said, you know, they, that when, when he was coming in, the people were crying out, you know, to him and everything. He said, tell them to stop. Tell them to stop saying these things. And, and Jesus said that the rocks would cry out if uh, these folks uh, didn't cry out to him. And uh, I know you're with me. You don't want to rock doing your praise, do you? Amen. You want to rock crying out to God for you? No, I don't. And uh, now I'd like to see that, <laughs> you know. Uh, but anyway, uh, God help us, right? And so in the first three verses, uh, that's what he's talking about. Of course, he's talking about, uh, you know, the heathen and, and talking about where's your God. And, uh, you know, just like today, folks, listen, uh, you know, they've been talking about the Lord's coming since uh, the apostles, haven't they? Uh, him returning, him coming back, and people were saying, where is his coming, you know, mocking, and but you know, the Bible tells us again, and listen, we, we don't need a reason, uh, we know God said he's coming back, and he's coming back, amen, but he told us in his word that he's long-suffering, amen, not willing that any should perish, but that might all might come to repentance, 
God wants to see people saved, amen, and uh, be in his family, and we ought to have that desire. Uh, but the Bible said in verse 3, he had done whatsoever he pleaseth. That's important, isn't it? Amen. God just does what he does, right? And uh, we ought to be satisfied with that. And then he goes into these false gods of silver and gold in verse 4. And he says they're, they're works of men's hands. And uh, that, that's an amazing thing, too, that a man, and you're going to see that later on here in the passage of Scripture, that, um, uh, that man would make a god, that he, he would make a god and... And, and, and these gods that he's talking about here, these idols of silver and gold, he, he says there they, they, they have mouths, uh, but they speak not. And that's amazing, isn't it? Here, they, they make these things and they can't even speak, but a man can speak. He says that they have eyes, but they see not. And, uh, and, and again, they make these uh, whatever, and of course Romans talks about they, they make them after the creatures of the, uh, you know, four-footed beast and all these kind of things, and birds and, and they have eyes, and uh, but they can't, they can't see, but yet a man can see, but he can't see his own foolishness, uh, that he's making a God that can't talk and uh, a God that can't see, and uh, we have an all-seeing God, and I was thinking about this as I was going back over it again, you know, <laughs> It's still mind-boggling that God, speaking of a mouth, you know, that he can speak and he can make sure everybody hears. Now, come on, folks. God can speak and he can make sure everybody hears. That's crazy. <laughs> you say, how does that work? He's God. He does what he pleases. Amen. Right? Yeah. Now, we, we live in the technological age. We got all kinds of ideas of how, uh, you know, when Jesus comes back, that he says, uh, every eye shall see him and all these different things, and we try to come up with scenarios. Well, God's got a way, regardless of whether technology makes it happen or not. <laughs> Even if we didn't have technology, God said it's going to happen, amen? We don't have to try to figure all these things out. And then he says that um, uh, they have ears, but they hear not. And we talked about that, the all hearing God that each one of us can speak not only out loud but we can speak in our heart and God hears it. He's the all knowing God. Amen. We can cry out unto him and uh, we should. And then we said uh, they have uh, noses, have they, but they smell not. And we, uh, I think that's where we ended last week and, uh, is that right Richard? <laughs> I got it right. I didn't even mark it. And, uh, but anyway, uh, where this is speaking of the sacrifice and that the Lord, you know, can, can um, uh, uh, that our sacrifices unto him in our lives now, today, uh, are a sweet-smelling savor unto God. Amen? Isn't that a blessing that we can be a blessing to God? Yeah. That, that's amazing, folks. Listen, that God would even allow us poor, pitiful creatures to be able to praise him and to thank him and, and uh, really worship him and, and uh, uh, be a, a, a sacrifice, a living sacrifice unto him. Now, I've mentioned to you before, this is not easy. I'm talking to the young people in our class. What I'm talking to them back there is not easy peasy. It's just not, folks. Listen, this is this is not, we live in a world that's corrupt. We live in an evil, wicked world, and we have an evil, wicked flesh that battles us every day, and, and uh, we got to go to God. Yes, there's a one-time consecration, but there's a daily consecration, too. Every day we wake up, we say, God, help me, amen. Help me to fight the good fight of faith. Help me to get to that day where I'm released, amen, from this body, and I'm going to stand before you, and, and may it be a well done, right, amen, when we do stand before him. And so then he comes, and he says, in verse number seven, he said, they have hands, but they handle not. Now, I want to turn to a passage of scripture here. It's a beautiful, beautiful passage of scripture. And one day, and praise be to God, all of us, all of us are going to be able to experience this as uh, the beloved John. You know, he was the one that would lay his head on Jesus' breast. He could actually hear the Lord's heart beat. Amen. And one day we're going to be able to, uh, again, 
uh, touch him ourselves and hug him and handle him as the Bible says. So look with me at 1 John, uh, 1 John chapter 1. This is what, you know, John, uh, he, he's trying to, uh, again, help uh, 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 those that are, he's writing to these believers that, again, who God is. He says uh, in verse number 1 of 1 John, he said, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard. Amen. Who did they hear? Jesus. Jesus. Amen. He is the he's the living representation of God. The full manifestation of God is the Lord Jesus. He said, "We have heard." Then he said, "Which we have seen with our eyes, and we looked upon, and our hands have handled the word of life. For the life was manifested." All right? It was unveiled, made known, and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us, that which we have seen and heard. Amen? We have seen him. We have heard him. We declare unto you that ye may also have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And then he says this, and there's a lot of keys uh, in the book of John. He wrote these things for a lot of particular reasons, but he, he tells us plainly. Sometimes it's hard to find the key to the book, but it's there, and uh, why it's been written. But John just spells it out. He gives us several keys. Look what he says here in verse number 4. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. Amen? So he's telling plainly the reason why he's writing these things, the reason why he's declaring this to these people is that they might have full joy. Amen? That joy might control their lives. Not other things, not circumstances, but who is joy? The person of the Lord Jesus Christ. When you have him, we talked to the, the young people this morning, almost called them kids. <laughs> They're not kids anymore. And uh, in 1 uh, uh, Corinthians chapter 3, he says, no, you're not. That you're the temple of the Holy Ghost and, 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 that, that, and that he abideth in you. And uh, that's amazing, isn't it? God in you. You have God in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, again, you, although again, these are terms uh, used for God as hands and feet and all those other kind of things. But it, it is definitely in the Lord Jesus Christ. But you can feel his touch. An idol cannot touch you. An idol cannot do anything for you. He can't put his hands upon you. But the Lord Jesus Christ can. Amen. He can touch you in your heart, in your life. He says they have hands, but they handle not. Feet they have, but they walk not. When I thought about this, I thought about in the garden. I don't know how all that was, but the Bible says... That, that, that God, the Lord God, walked in the garden in the cool of the day. I believe, again, that was a, a Christophany. I believe it was the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, that walked with Adam and Eve in the garden. Now, I can't say this for sure, because um, I don't know for sure, right? But I can say this. The Bible does say that God walked there in the garden. And, uh, again, the Lord Jesus walked with his disciples. And today... And although the Holy Spirit is pure spirit and does not have feet, but he walks with us. Amen. You can take your God with you that you may, but he can't walk with you because he can't do anything. Right? And so what the uh, uh, psalmist is saying here, how foolish it is. And really that's where uh, after he says they, they speak, uh, neither speak they through their throat. And he's, he's speaking about breath here, and ultimately, because uh, they, all of these characteristics, the eyes, the ears, the nose, the feet, the hands, the, the, the throat, all these things, they have no life in them, right? But yet people will bow down to idols. It, it's something that can never give life like First John, like John is talking about. People, and then folks, again, I said to you last week, we live for things like this that will never satisfy us never give us life. And again, it's not that they're bad things, but they're never going to give us what God gives us in his son. Amen. And uh, we should never worship anybody or anything other than God. Amen. Amen. And yet we do. 
And then notice what he says here in verse 8. They that make them are like unto them. So is everyone that trusted in them. What does he mean by that? How is a person that makes a god, you know, an idol, a statue, or anything like that, how are they like those things? We're limited. Hmm? We're limited. Limited? And really the truth, of, and, and we're big time limited, aren't we? <laughs> the truth of the matter is that the idol that they make can do nothing. <laughs> it can do nothing. And those people, really the truth of the matter is, this is what they've done. A person that makes an idol and trusts an idol to do anything in their life, guess what? They see not either. They have eyes, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. They have feet, but they, they don't know how to walk. They have hands, but they handle not. They have noses, but they smell not. Why? Because they've chosen to put their trust in a dumb idol. And therefore, you know what it makes them? Dumb. <laughs> that means it's foolishness. Have you really thought about it, right? Are y'all with me? That's why Jesus said, I mean, Jesus, uh, well, same God said in the Ten Commandments, you know, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make any graven images. You, you shouldn't do this. You know, now, folks, listen, people get mad at you when you tell them what the Bible says. <laughs> but I believe this with all my heart. You do whatever you want. I, if I came to your house and, and you had a picture of Jesus on the wall, I wouldn't say anything to you. But really, that's not Jesus. Most of these pictures of Jesus, they got, got him with long hair and, and he, he looks like some superstar, you know, good looking man. But the Bible, the Bible doesn't tell us that, does it? No, 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 no. It, be, it wasn't his outward that was attractive, right? It was his inward. It's who he is, you know. And by the way, <laughs> that was a, uh, you know, because men love darkness more than they love light. It was a, whoa, yikes. You know, we got to get rid of him, <laughs> right? Because that's, that's the heart of man, okay? And so this is what the Bible's saying here. It's saying, man, these people that make these things and they bow down to them, they trust in them, how foolish they are. Because it can never provide. Aren't you glad that we have a God that provides, amen? Yeah. Somebody that we can go to, amen, and can truly come through for us, amen? Praise God. That's our God, folks. And we need to worship him and praise him for who he is. And then notice what he says here. Again, he's going to go right into help. Right? Naturally so. The dumb idol can't help you. You can make all these uh, uh, idols and out of silver and gold, bow down to all these things, and, and they're never going to hear you. They're never going to do anything for you. And uh, my goodness, but God, notice what he says here. Contrasting. Right? To the false idols, to the false gods. Verse 9, he says, O Israel, talks to the whole nation. Right? Trust thou in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Amen? And so again, he speaks to the whole nation here. He says, Israel. And we can say this, church. Hey, right? Right? Amen? Now, Israel is not the church, but we can say to the church, 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 trust thou in the Lord. Your help, he is their help and their shield. Aren't you glad? Amen. And God still is our help in the church. Amen. He's still our shield. Praise God. He watches over us. Folks, listen, God. Now, I understand, folks, there's things you ought to do and different things like that. But we got to be so careful to put our trust in God to protect us. Amen. As a church. I'm talking about a, a church. Now, we have the, the, the local body here, Faith Baptist Church. We believe. Now, folks, that doesn't mean just throw everything out and say, oh, well, we're not going to have any kind of things here, you know, uh, 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 bylaws, different things. And all. But, but ultimately, we don't trust in the bylaws. We don't trust in our Constitution. We trust in God. Amen. Although those things should be written out and things should be right like that. But ultimately, again, you know, people get over all those things. I mean, and try to get you, right? And so ultimately, our trust is in God as a church, praise God, amen? And so here, what is, what is the psalmist saying? Boy, boy, get away from these idols. Now, you know, folks, we already talked about this. 
And this was Israel's biggest sin. Idolatry. They fell for it. They went in, and again, what did I tell you about idolatry? It leads to all kinds of other sins. It's just truth. We, we focus on the other sins, and we need to focus on these idols that are in our lives and ask God to remove them. Why? Because we trust in these things. All right, we're going to stop right here for just a second. I want you to tell me what are some of the idols that are today, in 2022, that people, people make, that they have in their lives. It, now look, don't be scared. Don't be afraid. We're not going to think that that's your idol. Okay? Oftentimes we say, I don't want to say that because, you know, they might think that's my idol. <laughs> and I don't want them to know my idol. <laughs> well, maybe we need to know your idol so we can pray for you and God get rid of it. I don't know. But no, no, just... <laughs> Right? I'll give you one. I'll give you one that could be an idol. Children. Your children. Your children can be idols. Your job. Sports. Cars. Huh? Cars. Cars. That's right. We talked about that last week. A car. That's amazing, isn't it? Bow down to a car. <laughs> what else? Money. Right? Prestige. Prestige. Education. Education. Food. Huh? Food. Hobbies. Celebrity. Huh? Celebrities. Celebrities. Celebrity. No, just celebrity. Like, right. Being a celebrity. Or are celebrities or in just themselves. Just or people, people that are celebrities, right? Above, right? No. Above anything else. Just right. Exactly. You can tell a lot about a person about the posters they put on their walls. <laughs> right? Just truth. You know? Been there, done that. Right? Preachers? Oh, wait a minute. Preachers. Yeesh. That's truth, folks. Oh, boy. I'll tell you, I can tell you story after story after story. Man, you, I'll tell you one now. Oh, um, can't even think of his name. God don't want me to tell you. A guy down there in um, South Carolina. Uh, oh, my goodness. What's the name of that school? Our church. Harold Seidler. Man, the people idolized Harold Seitler, folks. When the old boy died, you know, they, he died, man. And they, they, now, don't quote me on this, but man, they had close to a million dollars in the bank. But, the, but the, the, the children's home that they had down there was run down, didn't fix anything. It was terrible. And man, a new pastor came in there. He was different than Harold. He wasn't saving for a rainy day. <laughs> he wanted to fix some things up around there. Said he looked nice. Guess what happened? 700 people walked out. Church split immediately. Now, you think they idolized Harold Seidler and what he was doing? What we need to do to... Listen, people are different. People are different. There's no way, again, folks, listen. Now you, you, uh, anyway, <laughs> I get myself... Harold Seidler was a great man. But Harold Seidler, not God. Amen, preacher. There, there's many men out there. Now, I said he's a great man. He's a good man. There's no great man. He's a good man. God help us. Idolizing preachers. Wow. We, we put people on a pedestal, right? Never do that. Never do that. Why? You know why? Because they can fail. They can, they can die. As a matter of fact, uh, never mind. God help us, Right? You see, these, these particular things of our day that we have, again, we put everything into them, and then guess what? We're mad, we're mad at God. You know, God takes one of our children. We're upset. He took our idol. He, he take that out of our lives. You know, he, he takes something that you, you, you prize and you value. <laughs> I know a guy. I know a guy personally. Multi-millionaire. Multi-millionaire. Okay, <laughs> million dollars a year salary. And when all this pandemic hit and all these different things happened and, and money started, he, he was sad because he had to give up his $42,000 muscle car. <laughs> he really never I don't even know. I don't even know why he had to give it up. I mean, he really, I mean, he still had millions of dollars, I guess. 
But that was his idol. And can you imagine crying because you had to give up a car? That's bad, isn't it? My idol was Lynn Bias. I cried like a baby when he died. I mean, cried like a baby. Laugh, people laughed at me. He was my idol. But to me, I loved that guy. Didn't even know him. Man, I worshipped him. I did. But it taught me something. I said, I'll never worship another athlete ever again. And I have it. To God be the glory. We all have idols. We all have idols. And we all, we all put trust in people. In things. And we think, you know, like jobs, right? I mean, somebody comes in to you and they say, I remember when they came and said to me, yes, we're downsizing. We're, we're taking the job. I'm so glad that God put me in revival meeting and Karen and I in revival meeting after revival meeting, preparing me as a soldier. I had no idea why we were going to these different revivals and all they were talking about was the war and being a soldier and tragedy and circumstances. And they come and say, we, uh, we're downsizing your position. God had prepared me. Praise be to God. But what if I wasn't prepared? Right? Listen. All these things are true, and the Bible says, O Israel, trust thou in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. O house of Aaron, he's going to speak to the spiritual. Those that, uh, again, that were priests, he said, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their need. Then he says, ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. He's speaking to everybody from the, uh, the, from the whole nation. To those that would bring the, the, the sacrifices to God to the, the little man on the totem pole. <laughs> Just the person in Israel that had fear and reverence and worship for God. He said, listen, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. You realize there were people that had to spend. I've already told you this before. I, I'm amazed that. I said, I almost said my man. <laughs> my man, Caleb. <laughs> Caleb and Joshua. That's such an amazing narrative, isn't it? Here these old boys, they came in there, you know, and the, the other ten spies gave that sorry, no good for nothing report and uh, said, man, there are giants in there. We can't do anything. And okay, look, hey, look, don't listen to them. God said it's ours. They wouldn't listen. And them boys had to suffer for 40 years, folks. Y'all realize that, right? It wasn't their own doing. They had to suffer. They had to suffer with all the other people. <laughs> they believed God. Now, don't you think they weren't human, folks? The Bible doesn't tell us everything. <laughs> you know, I'm sure there were times you're like, man, <laughs> right? We could have had all this. You guys, you understand what you did? Now, we know God works in their heart, right? Amen. And then, boy, oh, Caleb, they said, when the time came after those four years, he was still full of, of vigor and life. He said, give me this mountain. <laughs> he was ready to still go get it, man. Right? He was still ready to fight for what was his. Amen. That God had given him that land. It belonged to him. Right? Amen. So there's times in our life, folks, you know, everybody else. And there was times in Israel when they were in bondage and it wasn't, the, it wasn't some of the other people's fault. They were following God. But the nation as a whole brought him in there. And folks, you realize a lot of us are doing some suffering today, including myself as far as the things that I do, causing the, 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 the church and, and different things to, to be under bondage and burdens and all kinds of things because of the way I act or something I do. We need to think about those things in our lives. God help us, Amen. To live a life that God wants us to live. Then notice what he says here. Is he not only goes uh, 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 to this help and, and, and being our protection and our shield. He says here in verse number 12. He said the Lord hath been mindful of us. <laughs> Aren't you glad when everybody else forgets you. God never forgets you. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's a blessing. The Lord has been mine. And all he's doing here, folks, is rehashing how God has been good to his people. And we can rest assured, folks, listen, if God has been good to his people all the way down through the years, he's going to be good to you and me. That's right. Because he never changes. God has been mindful of us. Look what he says. He, oh boy, he will bless us. 
He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. Who's that included? Everybody, amen. And he's speaking again to Israel, of course. But we can take this too because we know that God is a God that's willing and able and wants to bless. Is, is he not? Yeah. Doesn't God want to bless? Amen? amen? But the truth of the matter is he has requirements, doesn't he? God hasn't changed, folks. He still has requirements. And those requirements are trust and obey. But there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. As Sim has already prayed, oftentimes the answer might uh, uh, be wait. It's hard to wait, isn't it? It is. We're just a, we're a people, folks, that, my goodness, you know, if, you know, you know last night my dad, we went to Cracker Barrel, and uh, my dad got the, the uh, Southern Fried Chicken. And he kept telling us, he kept saying to us, he says, my fault, guys. It, it took him about, what, 40 minutes, maybe, uh, something like that. And my dad, he was just like, yikes. And, man, I was getting a little yikey. You know, I was hungry. <laughs> you know, we hadn't eaten anything. And it's like, uh, we got there at 2, and it's like 2.30, 2.40, you know, and the food's not out here, you know. Now, that's a little extreme, you know, but usually, you know, you know, it's 5 or 10 minutes for us. You know, we're like, uh, where's the food at? That says, my fault. He kept saying, I got that fried chicken. You know, it takes a long time for it to cook it and, and all that kind of thing. He said, man, I, I won't get it next time or whatever, <laughs> you know. And uh, But it's not his fault. It's all good, right? We need to learn how to wait. We need to learn how to be patient. Yeah. And by the way, these folks, man, uh, uh, they got two and three or four people in there working. Sometimes you got one cook. I went to Domino's two weeks ago and they got one guy in there making the pizzas. You know what day it was? Saturday. I'm like, you got to be kidding me, man. What dude in here making pizzas? He's not getting all these pizzas out. Why not be a blessing to the guy? Right? We, but we don't like to wait. We're... we're we, yeah, we gotta have it, have it yesterday. And then sometimes God says no, as Sim already prayed too. Sometimes He, you know, says yes. And but it's up to God and how God blesses and what He desires. And but we do know this. We do know this for sure. He will bless. That's what the psalm said. He will bless. Amen. And it's up to Him how He blesses. Right? Amen. And we ought to praise Him for that. And then notice, as he says here, he said, the Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. And then notice this here. He says, ye are blessed of the Lord which made heaven and earth. Now, he had to say that in there. Because men are making these gods, you know, these idols out of their hands. But our God, again, and, and the Bible clearly goes back to this, folks. Listen, if you get rid of the first 11 chapters of Genesis, you might as well forget it. This is, these are so important uh, uh, chapters in the Bible. Yeah. If you get rid of creation, folks, listen, don't buy into these people that go into this uh, uh, creation evolution. Yeah, I believe God did it through evolution. Are you crazy? Oh, they call that theistic evolution. No, no, God did it just the way he said he did it, amen. He created heaven and earth. He created everything. I mean, that's our God. That's the one that will bless us. Amen. He said, you're, you're blessed of the Lord. That's capital letters. Sovereign God. Amen. The one that needs nothing. That's your God tonight. You're blessed. Amen. Regardless of what you have or you think you don't have, you have God. Amen. And so ye are blessed too. Amen. He's your God. I think our thinking needs to be change, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> I really do. I think we need to start thinking better, you know, of who God is and who we are as his people. Notice, again, the, the, the control and the ownership. That's what's important too, isn't it? Notice what he says in verse number six, 16. The heaven, okay, the heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's, but the earth hath he given to the children of men. Listen, he said God is in control of all these things, but he has given 
uh, 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 to the earth, to mankind, for him to have this. Now again, remember, David doesn't have the New Testament. And David doesn't have a whole lot at all of the Bible. <laughs> Amen? So he doesn't know everything that you and I know. So what he's viewing this as is, 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 is earthly and, and, and praising God and doing what God would have him to do here on earth. So he says this. The dead praise not the Lord. <laughs> now, folks, we know that the dead are really living, <laughs> right? And they are praising the Lord, right? But David, he's not viewing this, and he really, he's speaking on an earthly sense, you know. The dead, they, they don't praise the Lord. Neither any that go down into silence, you know, once, once, once you leave this earth, there's no more time to be able to praise the Lord on earth. You have an opportunity now. This is what David is saying. Everybody in their right mind that, that's walking with God would want to stay here as long as we, God wanted us to, to be able to praise his name and to lift up his name and, and uh, to tell everybody that we come in contact that Jesus is Lord. Amen. There's salvation in him. There's an eternal life in him. Notice what he says here in verse 18 to close it. The dead can't do this. Those that have been silenced in the grave can't do this. The false gods, the idols that, 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 that have made by man that can't speak, that can't hear, that can't talk, they can't do this. After he says all the things about God and who God is and what God's going to do, he, he, he's trustworthy. Uh, we need to, he's, our, he's our shield, our protector. He's going to bless us, he says in verse 18. But we will bless the Lord. You know, sometimes, you know, well, a lot of times that we just need to bless the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, my soul. I can't think of the rest of that song. <laughs> Bless his holy name, I know it says. Yeah. Worthy is his name. Bless his name. Amen. The Lord needs to be blessed. We're blessed enough, don't you think? Yeah. Don't we think we, we should return the blessing, amen, to the Lord? Amen. He said, but we will bless the Lord. When are you going to do it, psalmist? From this time forth. And forevermore, praise ye the Lord. Our, all of God's people said, hallelujah. Amen? Amen. And folks, listen. As I said to you this morning, <laughs> the time is now. We need to stand. Right. Amen? It's yeah. time to stand. And it's time to praise God. Amen? Yeah. You can start tonight. Right? right? You can leave this place and you can go home and you can praise the Lord. It doesn't have to be the same old, same old. Now listen, folks. I'm thinking about my, my dear dad. You know, I remember talking to my dad after he had a colonoscopy. We are walking through Haynes Mall. And he's telling me about his life and salvation and you know how he got saved at a Delphi Bible Church in Delphi, Maryland. And how he was excited about the war and things of war and what God had done for him. And he was talking to a couple church members. And they really weren't excited and really just basically didn't want to talk about, you know, his new life and all these different things. He just basically put his fire out. And my dad was just a young, born again believer at that time. And he allowed that. He should have never done that. And my dad would tell you today that he should have never left. He made the choice. My dad made the choice to let some Christian wet blankets, you know, put his fire out in his enjoyment of God, in his newfound salvation in God. It took him years to just put that aside. And that's a bummer, isn't it? Isn't it? Amen. You let somebody else... That's what I told Mr. Herb. I said, Herb, I grabbed him and I said, Herb. He said, this is what he kept saying to me. He said, man, I just, I've, I've, I've had so much trouble in churches. I just, I've just had trouble with churches. I said, Herb, Herb, Herb. I said, we're not talking about churches. We're talking about Christ. 
You have no trouble with Christ being cruel. Amen. You have no trouble with Christ being unkind. Amen. He's the altogether lovely one. He's the Rose of Sharon. There's nobody like Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, I know you and I are supposed to represent him. Amen. Right? That's the way we should be. But oftentimes, we're not. The Thomas says this. From this time forward, right now, I'm going to choose again to bless the Lord and, and praise his name. And, and then I'm going to do it forevermore. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see, folks, no matter what else you're living for, and oftentimes we're living for a lot of other things other than God and who God is. Now, again, folks, uh, as I said to you this morning, the biggest hindrance to, to all of us, the truth of the matter is, is other people. Really, that's what hinders most people in their lives is other people and how they are and their attitudes and all these other kind of things. It's, it's a bummer. It's not right. It's wrong. But at the end of the day, still doesn't stop you. It shouldn't stop you from praising the Lord and thanking the Lord for the blessings that he's put upon you. Amen. And who you are and that you're saved by the grace of God. Let's stand our feet, have a word of prayer, and we'll... Head our separate ways and ask God to take these things and that from this time forth we will bless his name. We will praise him for what we do have. And we won't allow these other things to, to, to control us. Let's pray. Father, we are grateful for who you are. Thankful, God, for this song. Father, uh, we know the false gods, um, as uh, uh, Will Gawkin had said, the, 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 uh, uh, an idol uh, will not satisfy because it cannot satisfy. And Father, this is just so true. Help us, God, that there was never going to be true. Now, we need to enjoy our other relationships. And, and there's really, Father, we know there's not anything wrong with enjoying a job. And not anything wrong with uh, uh, getting a promotion or, or uh, some of these other things, Father. But when it comes to worship, there's only one. And that's the God that deserves worship. So we have to ever be careful in our hearts and our souls, Father, to uh, guard ourselves and uh, keep our heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Father, we, would, we need to recognize, God, these idols cannot produce anything, but yet you, who created all things, are the one that can give us everything we need for this life. As you told Peter there in 2 Peter to write down, you have given us everything that pertaineth to life and godliness. You have made us partakers of the divine nature, according there to 2 Peter. And so we praise you for that, God. Help us to go out and live forth, praising your name, thanking you for who you are and what you've done for us. We pray this in Jesus' wonderful name. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 God bless you. <laughs> Amen.